I'm Harry. I live out here in Montiki in a clan Karoo. And you know, I'm a local snake catcher here in town. And I'm going to make my auntie back. This is more than a meter. Let's just see what it's we can do. It's a big snake. I just want to get the head out. Without. Hey! You're yeah. all playing cup. Yeah. Get everything out of the way. It's not so much the head <laughs> yes, to get striped to the thongs. Yeah. Underneath that. Uh... See, once we're on the floor here, yeah, and I've got, because having the head contained for me is nothing. It's just having it in such a way. Okay, so just let go there quickly, then you see what we can do here. This thing is okay, right. so oh, oh, good. luckily there's no wires attached, so we can get it to come out. It's going to come. I want it to come by itself. Okay, just open that side. What's up? Actually, open the box for me. Okay. Okay. Got him. Come. Got him. Come. Got him. Hello, boy. Hello, boy. I want it. It's a beautiful color. So there's two ways. I did bring my see-through tube if you want to use this. That, that, and it's strange how it actually started. As a young kid, I grew up in Springbok and Makwaland, which is a little small town um, up on the west coast and in the Makwaland. And we didn't have a lot to do. So I ended up spending a lot of time in the felt, in the, like we call it the coppice, the mountains, flipping rocks, trying to find scorpions. Every now and then I came across a snake. It was mostly little um, horn adders and adders and I always used to back off and then use a stick and see how they react. And I started lost my fear of snakes because I realized they're not chasing you, they're not after me, but I never lost my respect. And strangely, you know, always being into snakes and having interest in snakes, um, as I grew older, People started asking me to come and remove a snake and I did it with my way with a bucket and a stick, you know, ne never professional. Five years back we moved to Montiki and um, one day our um, domestic worker called me and we had a big yellow cape cobra in our yard. And I had to think quickly and I grabbed bright tongs, which you're not supposed to do, and a broom. Because I weren't scared and I just put it into a dustbin, put it back on my truck and I took it to the felt. And that night, I actually said to my wife, I always wanted to do a snake handling course. Well, in short, I actually knew a girl on Facebook that was a snake handler, and I asked her information. And I ended up doing my snake handling course. Came back, put it on Facebook, like, it's such a nice experience, you know, handling Cape Cobras and Boomslang. And two days after that, I got my first snake call. Somebody just saw it on Facebook, they called me, and we on a farm, we've got a big Cape Cobra on, us, on our veranda. Can you please come and remove it for us? Um, jumped in a car, caught the Cape Cobra, released it in the felt. And uh, that was, it was such a great feeling seeing the snake going free. And then somebody in Montague in our little local paper actually put in a little ad for free and said, you know, anybody got snakes, phone Harry. And I started getting calls, like dozens of calls a week. And then I started snake education. I started going to the primary schools, the pre-primary schools, um, our high schools. I went to all the police stations of all the little towns in the whole district. I went everywhere and I gave my number and I did talks with them in libraries with the community. So I started to tell them what they must do when they see a snake and how they must react and what not to do. And people started doing that. And I've had cases of five-year-old kids throwing a towel over a Cape Cobra in their yard. And I drive 20 kilometers to their home and remove the Cape Cobra for them. And I realized like doing education about snakes and people see you working with snakes. People's mind change when they see how a snake reacts. They're not chasing you. The only time they will bite you is you literally grab them or try to handle them. 
and um, with our farms in our areas um, I've started training all the workers what they should and shouldn't do when they see a snake and I've been telling them if, if the snake is out in the field you watch it let it go give it let it just go go its way but if it's in your house if it's in a shed or somewhere where there's with you know it's trapped don't try to mess with the thing close the door watch the snake phone me and I go out and the farmers in my community is so supportive because they say it's so much safer for them to rather phone than trying to deal with a snake themselves and I've got farms here that's got such a positive attitude that they've got a zero kill policy that they actually told their workers if we find out you kill snakes on our farm you will lose your job yeah and everybody is like having having a big fit, having a big fit about it you know what we maybe gonna use have to use a ply or something and cut this because look at that that is so so tight. Yeah. It's been swollen. Mm. Need bolt cutters. Yeah, that's just a bit of a bolt cutter. Uh -oh. Got it. Yeah, big quick big quick Willy. Two more soon. I'm gonna take you out just now. No, it is the screen saves battery. Oh, yeah. Safety exits. Mm. It's obviously totally So to my skin the pipey dab and the in the khaki and then that's it. When it but the mensen can lekker werk. Come on. You know? It's a bit close still but no, not no, it's a bit close. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you can you push it? Okay, that's why. As soon as we got that Picture? Yeah. Got, got it. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm That's clever. Can you use Cover the eyes. Got it. Don't think about this. It's coming. No, as soon as you just get it past that part where it's swollen, then it will be able to get okay. through. Is it, it's not, the skin is still spinning, eh? Yeah. Check. Have you got it a little bit back already, can you? Or is you it see, still it's, on the south it's, side? It, 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 it is so... I was pull the skin through. I think this is our minion, so it's gonna go quick. Okay, I'm gonna have to go forward with my... Let's do it, we'll do this here, finger. No, rather so fast rock as what you are on the web. Pass up your finger, come by starting now. Okay. Here finger. Okay. It's up to there. Okay. Okay, I can't know by put my flutter fingers me. So when I started um, doing these um, snow calls, I just got more and more calls and to give people a rough idea, this is a very small community, very small little town and last season, my season is from September normally to April, May, June. Um, I removed 364 snakes and 194 of them were um, Cape Cobras. Then second to that was Boomslang and then Puff Adders. Few brown house snakes, few non-venomous snakes, but mostly venomous snakes. And you now we bring them home, we microchip them and I release them um, back into nature. And in this three years I've been microchipping. I haven't had one recapture because I scan all the snakes. So our area just have a lot of snakes. Yeah. Nice, nice. Hey. 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 Hey.
Yeah, no, there's no damage. You can feel it. Yeah, like no, it right. hasn't even broken it, the skin. It is just skin that's like all crumpled yeah, up. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like having a tight ring on your yeah, finger. Yeah. And um, and um, we actually wanted to get some something on film, like you know, a, a actual capture. That's um, not like the ones on TV you see yes, that's yes. planted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was actually captured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> an actual, uh, an actual it's snake. It's authentic. An actual mm. snake rescue. About a three meter snake now. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, it's, it, it is normally like that people call you for a three meter cape cobra or like two meters. I don't mean. Yeah, and yeah. And it's, like, it's, it's like it's all of a sudden like freedom, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like almost, I'm free. <laughs> um, with snake catchers, I've also seen that. It's so nice seeing so many people doing snake handling courses and I do encourage that. I encourage young kids and everybody to do a snake handling course if they want to. But advice as an older person I would give is do not do a course and then a week after that start giving your number out for snake rescues. Team up with somebody that knows what they're doing because most of the catches I'm actually doing at the moment is not a walk up, pick up a snake, put it in a bin situations. It's situations where snakes are stuck into you know, wire fence. Um, sometimes there's nicking involved, sometimes there's tubing involved. And as a beginner snake catcher, they're going to be put in, the, in those situations by themselves and bites is going to start happening. Team up with guys that's been doing it for a while and do get experience. Don't advertise your services if you've just done your um, beginner snake handling course. It's just as a warning. Um, I don't want to see people get put in me course. In so many years of work you put into your community, one bite from an idiot and everything is down the drain and you have to start from scratch again. changed so much in South Africa when it comes to snakes that you know snake information is available to everybody. He says if you've got a smartphone we've got an um, app on Google Play called ASI Snakes you download it for free and wherever you are it works on your location if you've got a snake you press a button it will show you your nearest snake catcher with the number and you can get out and they can come and um, remove the snake for you. They've got snake ID on there, they've got snake information, first aid, not just for snake people, for hikers, people into cycling and camping. It's a good thing to have. Okay, I don't know if you don't act as a so what's the process now? Is it you, is there a specific spot that you uh, pick regularly? Or? I normally put it on the, in the middle on the back. Yeah. Middle on the back. It just mm. goes in un, under the skin. Okay. In, slips in. There we go. Okay, let me just check. There we go. Let's go. Brilliant. Okay. How she's gonna go in. Yes. Thank you, girl. Good girl. Been a good girl. He paid for so. Okay, your hand. Just wanna see where it is. Wait, she's gone in now with my tongs. There we go. Okay. Perfect. That's a beautiful puffy. Ah, uh, you push it right through. Okay. You see, that's the difficult. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Thank you. Hello. Ah, oh, it's time for the boys. Come on, there's a beautiful male. Okay, just close the bench. Let me show you. Uh-uh. Nice. There we go. Scan it. There we go. On Facebook, um, there's a couple of groups and pages 
that you know I would suggest if you're into South African snakes. I've got my own um, group called Snake Lives Matter, Stroke Caddy Snake Adventures. Like it, join, post, follow the post. And there's two groups that I really, really um, do suggest. And it's the main one is Snakes of South Africa, which is a big group, which is brilliant. And then also a group called For the Love of Snakes, of a friend of mine called um, Willem van Sale from of, of Cape Town, which is also a brilliant group. I suggest groups that I know the people that's in admin, it's people that can give you the right information and they're not going to give you nonsense.